By 1939, Americans knew about the Nazi persecution of Jews in Europe. Yet 83% of the country, according to Fortune magazine, said it didn't want to admit refugees. And over half the population agreed with the statement, Jews are different and should be restricted. President Roosevelt tried to raise the immigration limit to allow more Jews to find shelter in America. But he met with resistance from the State Department and Congress. It was the State Department that refused to let 900 Jewish refugees from Europe aboard a German ocean liner to dock in a U.S. port. It was turned away, and a Coast Guard vessel followed it out to sea to make sure no refugees tried to jump ship. In 1944, President Roosevelt learned that an official at the State Department, Breckenridge Long, had drastically reduced Jewish immigration and lied about how many had been admitted. Between 1933 and 1945, the U.S. took in only 132,000 Jewish refugees, just 10% of America's legal quota. Long was kicked out of his position, and Roosevelt established the War Refugee Board to set up camps for people who had escaped Nazi persecution. On August 5th of 1944, the board admitted the first large group of refugees into the U.S. 982 people from 18 different countries, ranging from newborns to 80-year-olds. Many had previously been put in concentration camps and escaped. Almost 90% were Jewish. Arriving by train in Oswego, New York, they were led into Fort Ontario, an 18th century fort that had been an active army camp until 1940. Customs officials went through the pathetically few belongings the refugees had brought with them. The officials were so moved by the experience that they chipped in and bought a complete outfit and toys for a pitifully ragged nine-year-old boy. The refugees were given housing, food, and medical attention. They were given shoes and new clothes and allowed to stroll around the grassy park and enjoy the lake view. But they saw they'd be living behind a wire fence topped by barbed wire, and some worried they'd exchanged one concentration camp for another. Their suspicions grew when the gates were locked behind them. To prevent any infectious diseases from the immigrants spreading into the town, the refugees were kept inside the fort for weeks. Meanwhile, the people of Oswego lined the outside of the fence. They were welcoming and supportive. They passed food through the chain-link fence, and someone even passed a bicycle over the barbed wire. When quarantine ended, the camp opened the gates to the residents of Oswego. About 5,000 people came to meet the refugees and see the camp for themselves. Restrictions eased. Residents could now go into town and visit the post office, the library, and the Woolworth store. They were thrilled to meet Eleanor Roosevelt, who came to visit them. Refugee children mixed with local children at Oswego's middle school when classes began. The refugees reported that everywhere they went, they were greeted by gracious and generous people. In September, the first baby was born in the camp. After months of paperwork, the parents were delighted when authorities agreed the child would be granted U.S. citizenship. President Roosevelt had received approval for the refugee camp only by promising that the refugees would stay close to the camp and promptly be shipped home when the war ended. The refugees had signed their agreement to these conditions. But with the war drawing to a close, many wanted to remain in the States. Some of them knew that they had no home to return to. Roosevelt probably would have supported their staying, but he died in April 1945, and no one knew what would happen next. After Germany surrendered the next month, a group of refugees sailed back to Yugoslavia. The rest remained, asking for permission to stay. Just three days before Christmas, President Truman gave the refugees permission to remain in the country. Organizations from several states immediately came forward offering help in resettling. Representatives went through the camp recruiting refugees for their state. So another 922 immigrants added the wealth of their experience to the country. 
Fort Ontario remained the only refugee center in the United States during the Second World War. This video was brought to you by the Saturday Evening Post Digital Archives. Saturday Evening Post members can explore our 200-year-old archive for only $15 a year. Subscribe today.